welcome to my pantry. This is my latest bulk haul from the local co-op, which happens to be the Santa Monica co-op. I got, I went in there and I bought a, a number of things that I thought I would like to cook that's leaking. And I know this is bad, everything is in plastic. I used to bring my jars. Um, I didn't do it this time. And I need to put all of these items into glass for better storage. But regardless, I wanted to show you. I'm really excited. My most exciting find on this haul were these baby white lima beans. Now, legumes are generally, the lighter in color, the easier they are to digest and cook. So these are black eyed peas. These are small aduki beans. You can also go by size. So aduki beans are also very light and easy to cook. So are lentils. Um, these are mung beans, which I'm sprouting. Navy beans, split peas, black beans, kidney beans, which I've already sprouted. And these are black sesame seeds right here. And then I got the black rice. Anyway, today we're going to create something with my sprouted baby lima beans. I'm so excited about these sprouted lima beans. I don't think I've had lima beans since I was a child and we used to eat frozen lima beans in butter. But these are sprouted lima beans. This is the third day of sprouting. This is my little concoction here with a clean dishcloth and a rubber band. And they've been draining, that's how I've been draining them because I don't have a top for this and I ran out of clear ball jars. Anyway, uh, I'll do another sprouting um, episode, but this episode is about vegetable pancakes. And here are my beautiful vegetables. I've been wanting to make something with these delicious asparagus. I have a little hot chili and I have a carrot and I also have an onion and some broccoli stems. I save my broccoli stems if I'm just steaming the heads and I save them, I can use them in salads. I love them raw but I'm gonna chop them up. I think they're gonna add a lot of good flavor and texture. And I'll chop up all these veggies and get them steaming in this pot with just a little water. And then I will drain them here in this colander. And meantime, I will make the batter out of the lima beans in the blender. So join me and follow along. Thank you for being here. So vegetables have their own moisture. And I don't use a colander to steam but I use a very little bit of oil. This is a broad pan. It's actually an egg poaching pan, but I, would, I don't use it for that. I use it for a lot of steaming. It's a great shape. So I've just covered the bottom with this small layer of salted water. And now the way that I cook vegetables is I begin with the ones that take the longest to cook, which are carrots in this case. So, and I layer them in and I don't stir them. So the carrots will stay on the bottom of the pan and um, then I will add the broccoli stems, then I will add the onions, and then finally the asparagus. And I will let it all steam with the lid on, and then they'll all become done at the same time. So now I've chopped up the broccoli stems. Broccoli stems are so underrated. These are the skins, I just chopped those off liberally, they're tough. But the inside is so crisp and flavorful and full of nutrition. We're starting to get a little heat action here got the heat somewhat low, of course, but I'm going to cover this and it's going to steam up. I'll show you in a minute before I add the onions, but I wanted to say one thing about broccoli stems, which is I was in a restaurant recently in the Upper East Side and they had this delicious dish of pickled vegetables with spice. It was a Chinese restaurant in high demand and everyone was gobbling them up, but nobody knew what the vegetable was. It was crisp, delightful, sweet, pungent. And we asked, and it took us a while to get an answer because I think they were embarrassed. They were serving us broccoli stems at $20 a plate. These should never go in the trash. They're delicious and nutritious. All right, so look, we're already getting a nice steam, nice color on these carrots. We don't need them to cook all the way. We're really just steam blanching them, which is a quick cooking and I'm putting the onions in third to the last because I actually like my onions a little crunchy. Now let me show you something about food storage, okay? So I've used a quarter of an onion and I've cut it very strategically how I cut onions. We can do that in another episode. I have it 
and then I used one quarter of this half. But I am not going to put this raw onion in my refrigerator in a plastic bag or in tin foil as I see a lot of people do. Onions are extremely powerful. They're very pungent and they absorb whatever is around them. So I don't want them absorbing plastic, I don't want them absorbing foil, and then I'm going to eat it again. I'm going to put them in wax paper to protect them, and then I'm going to put them in the plastic. And that's the best I can do for now, barring putting it in glass or something. But never store your onions in foil or just plastic alone, because this is very powerful, and it's absorbing what's around it, and you don't want to be eating aluminum foil. Now we've got an entire bunch of asparagus finely chopped for our vegetable pancakes on top of all the other vegetables that were in here, and when they turn bright green and tender, it will be done, and we will drain them and get them ready to put in the batter. Meantime, I have my frying pan here, and I'm gonna whip up this batter in the blender, but I'm going to turn on the flame to very low, and I'm gonna put oil in the pan so I'm not leaving it dry. And that pan and the oil will be slightly warming so that when my batter is ready, I can get these frying up because I got a little bit behind today and I didn't start cooking when I needed to. So I've gotta be quick. Onto the batter. Okay, this is a complete experiment. I have two cups of beans, one tablespoon of dulse, two tablespoons of arrowroot, which is a replacement for corn uh, powder, and here we go, arrowroot powder, and that's a thickener, some salt, a pinch of black cumin seeds, and I'm going to put about a quarter of a teaspoon turmeric in there for color so they can be beautiful and bright. I'm going to blend that up with about a cup of water to start and we'll see where we go from there. Just took the lid off these vegetables. I'm going to pour them into this colander and drain out all the water. I was considering using any of the water. Look how little water is in there and I've steamed all these vegetables in this pot. Look at that. So that's amazing. I may use that water. I may incorporate it right in with this batter. But here's the batter I blended. It's a, it's a little bit thick and it needs some salt. I added another quarter teaspoon of turmeric. I think I'll do a little coriander, some salt and slices of this red pepper and we will stir it in here into this bowl with the vegetables and the vegetable water and we'll be ready to fry. It's coriander and red pepper, and I went ahead and dumped in the liquid from the vegetables. So it's all in there, and the vegetables are kind of cooling down now, so they will incorporate really well when the batter is blended. Let's see if it needs any water. I don't think so. We will see. All right, here's the proof. I've stirred up the uh, batter. I've got my pan hot with oil now. The heat is up. It's up and it's been sitting here, so I'm worried that these are going to be too runny. But I feel like the heat should thicken them right away. And I'm hoping they'll hold together once the arrowroot kicks in to the heat. So I've got to have just the right temperature to sear them and not burn them as the middle cooks. We'll see how that goes. I might even just cover them because what that will do is it will create more heat into the pancake, heating up that arrowroot and thickening them and cooking them in the middle so they hold together. I may just cover them for a few minutes and then take it off. I've done a few dishes while I'm waiting. I've cleaned the uh, blender, it's all clean. And now I can see that the edges are crisping up really nicely, so I'm getting excited. And there are little, um, little holes in the pancake, so that's really good. Maybe I can turn it down a little. And see if they're ready to 
slip. Well, you know, one thing that I thought of using instead of that coriander I added, but I didn't, I didn't think I had really time to experiment with it and get it out was saffron. These could be amazing, have been amazing with some saffron, maybe another time, or maybe one of you will do it and let me know. Wow, so these are sprouted lentil bean fritters. They look amazing. It's funny how pancakes shrink as you cook them. There wasn't enough room in there for more before, but there is now. I'm gonna add one or two. First, I need a little bit of oil in the middle. Put it on. So I'll finish up the dishes and we'll be ready to plate these. So I've got the second batch cooking.